Hey guys and welcome back to another one and today I've got here with me a HDMI stick with Miracast and AirPlay capabilities. Now for those that don't know what basically this allows us to do is just to connect to the back of our TV and after that we are able to stream content from mobile phones, tablets, computers and so on to the TV itself. Now this is very interesting especially if your TV hasn't got those features already. Now about a year ago I did test out one of these devices, it was not from this brand but it was with the same technology and I will try not to forget to post a link for that video right over here. This just to say that a year ago I did have a really bad experience with one of these and it was useless to say the least. As you can see on the video just do yourself a favor and skip the first five minutes of that video. Now this being said a few weeks ago I was challenged to test out and review one of these sticks and a spoiler alert before we begin the video they are much better still not perfect though so this being said let's go for the video hope you enjoy it and i'll see you in a few seconds Regarding the unboxing experience, there is not much to it. Once we open the package, we will find the HDMI dongle with a micro SP at the back to connect the Wi Fi antenna. We will also find the Wi Fi antenna with two connectors, one of which is a micro USB and the other one a full sized USB. Finally, there's also a user guide, but you will not be needing it, at least on my opinion. In terms of colors, there are five available colors being the pink, blue, green, yellow and white. The one that we will be testing is the white model. In terms of connectivity, all we have to do is to connect the HDMI dongle at the back of our TV on a HDMI free slot and then connect the micro USB to the dongle and the full size USB to a free USB port on our TV and that is it. And now when we turn the TV on, we will have all the necessary instructions on screen so that we can connect any mobile device like a phone or tablet or even a computer. One of our devices, just select the Wi-Fi connection from the iPush device, connect to it using the password on screen and we can now have access to the settings menu. And in the settings menu, we will find options as changing the resolution up to 1080, which is the resolution that we are going to use on these testings, change the password to something more friendly to you, connect the iPush device to our internet connection, change our language, reset the device, and finally update the firmware. I would also like to mention that we just need to configure these settings once, and after that, any device that we connect will use those same settings. So I started my testings on the iPhone 4S and the results are that we will be able to have a nice experience on mirroring, always with a bit of delay, so it's not advisable for gaming for example, but to show off some pictures or any videos like YouTube will play just fine. The image was very smooth and so was the audio. And on the iPad mini with retina display, the results were exactly the same, having a nice experience showing photos or videos. And I also tested out the range and up to 5-6 meters we will be just fine. After that we will have the signal that will start to degrade and the results will be much lower. Now testing with the MacBook Pro the results were a bit different, especially because we are dealing with much higher bitrate files. So to browse pictures will be fine as we can see on screen and for light slideshows like the magazine style slideshow from the Photos app, we will also have an acceptable performance on image quality and also a smooth playback on audio. On the other hand, heavier bitrate files or more demanding slideshows then we will start to see some image frame dropping and some casual freezes that makes the experience not so good. I did run two heavier tests, the sliding panels and also the vintage prints and although the audio was perfect, the image experience is not the best and we will need to lower the resolution way down to get better results. And finally, testing YouTube videos at 1080p, it will play, but the experience was not good at all. There was some serious frame dropping and also the audio was totally out of sync. So once again, to have acceptable results on playing this kind of content, we really need to lower the resolution way down. So in conclusion guys, things that I did like the most, it is a great companion for a non-smart TV at a budget, totally capable of streaming content from mobile devices and also capable of streaming light files from computers. On the other hand, things that I did like the less, for high bitrate files streamed from laptops or desktops at 1080p, it's still not ready. 
And that is it, guys, regarding this overview. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, so don't forget that thumbs up over there. My name is Roberto George. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.